Good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Eat, Crit and Survive, where a bunch of people gather in different locations to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Yay! Yes, we are back playing D&D after our brief hiatus of playing board games and then not playing D&D. Um, it's because the life things making people tired. Uh, by tired, by people, I mean me. Um, so maybe it's why we didn't die last week. But by, by tired, you mean tired. And by tired, I mean just tired. I felt tired. Sick. I like was, just yeah, I was rolling around going, uh, mm -hmm. <sighs> it happens. Um, but we are back. We are back playing D&D &D and uh, back with our characters. We are missing a Connor and a Matt. They are both doing work-related things. Connor may join in at some point. He probably won't. And Matt definitely won't. He might turn up around 2 o'clock in the morning. Who knows? Um We'll finish by then, because we're probably only going to go out to half ten, so it's going to be a bit of a shorter stream than usual today. But, hey, we'll just uh, carry on as it goes. Um, so for the last month, we were taking part in the Razor Game Campaign for Dimension UK. As a fundraiser, we were playing a bunch of board games, uh, where mostly Dom won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross managed to get a win. Did I just uh, have like one game and... No, I turned up for two games and got one win? Or did I turn up for one game and got one win? He only turned up to one round of Classic Weapon, though. 100% win yeah. rate. Yeah. Or were you there for two? No, you were there for both rounds of Classic Weapon. No, 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 he joined us one up. Did you join us for the second yeah. one? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I won one game, then I retired. Yes. Basically. Undefeated. Undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> Apart no, from... you joined us on the second round. You came, Dom... Dom smashed the first. The first one. Dom smashed on the first one, then Ross destroyed yeah. everyone. Yeah, I just got uh, insanely good. Call, you insanely lucky. And so did I. We didn't know the rules. We had to get told what the rules were. Oh, yeah. Got what school. rules we got? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 We got told we were playing it wrong, but you know what? We were told how to play it. It's fine. Doesn't matter. We're only playing it minor. Yeah, it was a minor inconvenience of rolling a die. Yeah. But to be honest, it doesn't take anything. It's not that broken. Um, but yeah, the majority of the games, Don managed to take a win from, and our last one, he squeaked it in, which was good. Oh, oh, I'm still fuming. <laughs> uh, but if you want to check that out, you can go and have a look at our YouTube channel. You can go and see our board games. You can type in an exclamation board game into the street, into the chat, and it will bring you a link to our YouTube page. Where you can find that. Do now. Should do. I hope. Oh, I set it up. Someone's just done it. Is it you, Ross? It was me who did it, it did not work. But also if you type YT, I'm pretty sure it does come up. Oh no, that's, uh, our, that's our adventuring one. Oh, follow our, oh no, oh, follow our that's adventuring D &D one. Three. Yeah. Board game one word, board game two words. Let me check, it is board games. Games. Oh. There you go. Yay, no bot. Um, and also, if you want to, if you want to, our link is still open for the Dimension UK. So, if you still want to donate some money, you can type in exclamation charity, and it will take you to our fundraising page. We raised 120 pounds, which I was incredibly pleased with. It was I was very pleased with stuff. Pretty good. Smashed it for our first, first like streaming fundraiser. Well, it was our second actually. We did one oh, a yeah, while. You did one. We did one. Well, we say one. Uh, we did a stream. Back in when was it? 2017, something stupid like that, or 2018? It was a while ago. It was a long time ago, where we played a nine-hour game. Was it in between where I left and then I came back? Probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it was after Tom. 2019. It was after Tom stag do. So whenever, whenever your wedding was, Tom, it was after that. It was August Bank Holiday 2019. Was this it was really hot? Of, uh couple commitment there that he remembered his anniversary is that what we were doing what I was trying for it was just uh, trying to remember vaguely when it was I remember the sad thing it was uh, intense hot it was I think it was the hottest day of the, the hottest day of the year plus we were in a greenhouse yes. well, yeah, yeah yeah and it was before my parents installed air conditioning in that room yes yeah. it was really useful yes um, and that that time we were raising it for Cynthia Spencer which was nice yeah. Um, so we'll probably will be doing some more charity things as the year goes on. Yes. Uh, but in terms of board games for this month, we are going to be playing, we're doing a thing called New November. Uh, we are going to be playing new board games to us. Laura and I are going to be playing a game of Settlement at some point. Probably going to be the week after next. We're going to put that up. We're going to record, we're going to pre-record that one um, and then pop it onto the stream because it makes our life a little easier because we're coming back from a holiday. Yes! Um, 
Uh, next week we will play a game. We haven't decided what yet, but I'm... Do you hope we're not playing d d just on play? Possibly. Um, but I'm feeling playing um, Architects of the Western Kingdom. That's what I'm that was a lot of fun. Or the West Kingdom. Um, that sure. was a lot of fun. That might be, uh, good it's work. new November. Let's try everything. New games. New games. Who dis? Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go from there and see how it all plays out. Yes, yes. Uh, but in the interim, we have some dice to roll because it's been a while and people have forgotten how to play D&D. Uh, uh, how do d d So where do we pick up where we left off last time? The Wandering Stars had completed their mission in the Feywilds and returned to find that not much time had passed. Thank God. After gambling it all at the casino, are they asked for best boss takedown ever? Oh, it's, it's, one it's, it's one of my yeah, favorites. It's one of my favorites. I think so. Um, if you want to see that, go check out our YouTube. Um, they returned, having been successful, and took a night's rest to repair parts of the blimp and to plan what their next goal was going to be. You set out and made your way to, uh, where did you go? You went to the Grove first to go and pick up Gundamir, who teleport you in, and you decided, sod it, we'll go and take on the air. Uh, <laughs> Whilst we're here. Take over the Storm Lord. Um, so you went and dealt with him. And it was, uh, I think his actual name is Helsfarger, the Corpse Devourer. Uh, you took him down, and it was quite a spectacular fight, despite people getting stunned a lot by lightning and being pushed back. But, but it su went surprisingly well. It I went think. surprisingly well. And you now find yourselves still in the middle of the eye of the storm, swirling around the top of Gaia's Desire, where the former, actually no, not former, where the guild hall, the original guild hall to the Orionids, is still remaining. <clears throat> um, just to interrupt you really quickly. Um, yes. Obviously on Twitch you can gain points, and one of the things that I threw in there that I never cleared with you was the name <laughs> generator so people can spend 5,000 points to name a character item or town connor has redeemed five thousand worth of points Ooh. and has requested that an item name of sort of smiles be made of some sort next campaign i don't know whether yeah, it's this campaign or next campaign or any other campaign it's for, my uh, character's weapon just needs to come up at some point the sort of point sort of smiles needs to come up um right. yes Understood. thanks connor <laughs> You have to yeah. grin as you're getting killed. <laughs> or, or maybe, you know, it's got like smiley face patterns on the blade. Maybe, yes. The cross guard is just a big grin. Or, uh, a weapon, like... when you get struck by it, it then casts uh, Tasha's uh, hideous laughter on you. Maybe. Oh, I feel oh. that you could get some seriously messed up shit with a <laughs> weapon called that. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe something else we're talking there is uh, people can recommend board games for us to play as a yes, point. yes. We can definitely that can definitely be a thing. We'll let Ross worry about that uh, after the stream, um, or now, no, after the stream, or now if you've got time to do it. Um, not like you're doing anything else, right? Yeah, not like I'm playing D and D. No. So, um, with that in mind, then, gentlemen and Laura, what would you like to do? Uh, also, Ross and Laura, can you pick up one of the character sheets for each for Cedric and Kara? <laughs> uh, um, it's let's... unlikely they'll be needed. You mean Kara or Asha? Did I say, what did you, you like? said Cedric and Kara Tara. I meant... To be fair, it's because you have been normal. Yeah. Um, if only so that we've got someone just in case we use any of their abilities. Um, Laura, which one would you prefer to pick up? Probably Galatar just because he can Eldritch Blast everything. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair. Uh, uh, I need to sign out of me and go back in. Um, so, yep. with Boundling, cradling the uh, Storm Lord's form contained within the, uh, within the crystal. Oh, no. What's wrong? Okay. Wise. I was on my card down now. I had to sign back in. Uh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. We can. 
Ross, you can do three characters on the stream, right? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, 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 no worries. King of multitasking here. I got you guys. No worries. Also, also parents and yes. big husbands and so IT support. And, yeah. Uh, Make muffins. Yeah. Yeah. No, no we can't take credit for Danny. Was that was on Danny. Yeah, I can't take any credit for those. Ross, I'm Ross grew the pumpkins. So... I did grow the pumpkins. Grew the they were in the muffins. So. so if you want, if you also want to redeem all of your channel, seven thousand channel points, you can get a Ross's pumpkin delivered. Yeah. Uh, Ross will personally come and deliver it to your door. UK only. Seven thousand points. That's that's cool. I mean, I have twenty thousand points just sitting, waiting to. Be right, there you go. You can deliver. I can redeem. To I can redeem almost three pumpkin pumpkin muffins to myself. No, no, pumpkins. I said not oh, pumpkin. pumpkin. Whole pumpkins. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna need a bigger patch. Uh, yeah. And he'll wear an extra pumpkin as a mask. Yeah. Doing, yeah. So. <laughs> We have a whole of that one that he used for Halloween. Anyway, uh, yes, so I feel like this is going to be an off the rails kind of session, even though we're not going to be <laughs> not yes. doing that. What um, made you feel like that? But, to, but there's never any mail voting in our sessions. Not in this yeah. one. Not in this one. Not, not, not unless I really need you to do something because I'm getting fed up. <laughs> I just want to get on with it. And even then, you would never know. Anyway, what would you like to do? Let's go kill some shit. I think, hang on, let me check where we're at. I have a feeling we need to vest. Yeah, we... But probably not right where we are, because aren't uh, we still in the middle of a thunderstorm? Yeah. Yes. And we... as a point of order for the uh, flyers, so Lyra... Uh, who... Yes, Lyra, you had a potion of flying. Huh. Oh, uh, yeah. Lyra, Foundling, and Asher, mm -hmm. who are the ones that were flying at that particular point in time, your flight speed will be coming to an end in about... Uh, let's see what I've got written down here. You've probably got another 30 seconds. Does it not... Oh, I thought this was like the spice bound. <laughs> like eight hours. Not the potion. Oh, dear! Potion lost me. And Ash is not for long either. Yeah, head back to the bit of land where everyone else is. No. Right. Can we see any, like, buildings or remains of buildings? Yes. So the, the main island that you landed on in the first place was the destroyed remains of Gundamir's home. Over sort of uh, about, probably about 11 o'clock from where you are and down, you can see the top of the mountain. Um, and on there, you can see effectively uh, two or the tops of two massive um, totem poles oh, okay. carved from stone. I thought you were going to be like, element. <laughs> two massive elements. Yeah. Totem poles. How far away is that? Uh, they are maybe. Couple hundred feet across and down. Right. Any ideas? Are we? Why, why are we going to them? What are, what are they? I think they're probably what's left of the Orionids Hall, Ooh. which is like the main thing that was here. Uh, oh, okay. We'd like to go, but I don't think we've got enough time to get there with our current flying. I got a carpet! You've also got me. I can carry people. Yes. Carry people or do the cloud form thing? I, mean, I could do that as well if you would prefer. Yeah, we only need to go. How far away was it? Got a couple hundred feet. Oh, it's fine. Then. The winds, however, are incredibly strong. Let's go surfing. Yes. Although they are lessening somewhat than they were during the battle. Now that the tempest form has. Can I just hop risen. on the carpet over the land and just see how it is? Make a strength saving throw. But every one of my characters, this has been their worst stat. Let's see how this goes. Next campaign, I really hope not. No, that's <laughs> why I'm shaking it up. Boing. No. Save. Yeah. Three. <laughs> so as you sit on the carpet, 
you lean on it just to you know get your place on that you just feel the coffee go <laughs> like if you're on one of those wave rides yeah you get absolutely wiped out yep nice. but luckily, luckily you're gripping onto the carpet as it goes <laughs> and gets blown off to the side oh. <laughs> just taken away a couple hundred feet. i would not recommend the carpet <laughs> She says while holding on to it upside down. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm like pulling it deep. <laughs> no, no, you're off the land. You're just in the air. <laughs> oh. The wind took you. It took you away. You're now just. Oh, I like yeah. it. Like, okay. Nope. Oh, so I'm just hanging on. Yep. Uh, can you get back here, Lena? Can I try and get back and try and, like, hello? You can try make an athletics check. Oh, how many spells left have I got left? <laughs> Let's just cast fly. <laughs> uh, uh... <laughs> I can I can if I want to. Um, yeah, I'll cast fly just out of pure panic. Okay, cast <laughs> fly on yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I should float around onto the top of the carpet. Meanwhile, Gundamir is just all sitting there, ready to cast his uh, Wind Walk spell. Uh, if you'll hold on and join near me, it should be fine. I have some control over the winds. What? Hold on. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Spell slots. Oh, no, they've all gone. I don't have fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no. Um, well, look at I... Don't, I don't have fly. Yeah, no, sorry, I don't have fly. Okay, let's have a look at what the range of wind walk is. <laughs> oh no, where are what? Why don't I have any spell slots? You use them. We've just been through a big fight. No, it's even my first level. It says I've got, I haven't even. No, so it's no, so sorry, something's wrong here. <laughs> uh, something weird has gone on because when I got into foundling, um, some of the weapons have been unequipped. Yeah, because yeah, so my yeah. equipment has been unequipped when I logged into Alira. Yeah, sorry, I haven't used them all because I've only got like one spell slot that's actually been used. Connor, real talking, have you been fucking with the character sheets? God damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, for some reason I can't click on it. I do have fly. Okay. It, for some reason, it's just not letting me click on it. Okay. Might just be a bit of a bug that's going on yeah. at the moment. Okay. Uh, you are able to cast Fly. Gundamir will cast Wind Walk on the rest of you. Uh, but not himself. He will fly along and he will just cast uh, Control Air or Gust, whatever spell is that you can do to navigate the wind so it makes it easier for the rest of you to get down. Okay. Well, now, end of it. You head down into the through the clouds to the bases of, as you come down, you come through into the base of this these giant totem poles. Um, the ones at the bottom look like they are fairly vicious boar heads. But you can see that as they go higher and higher and disappear up into the clouds, they have been more and more eroded by the winds. Um, so what was once there no longer can be discerned. Oh, no. But between the two is a huge stone doorway. Dolphin? Doorway. Okay. <laughs> We're in the same uh, room. How is it we're hearing the question? <laughs> no, no, I like the idea that the avoid is, you know, the greatest, most dangerous beast they managed to slay. They come right through the statue. The fearsome dolphin. <laughs> In Greek mythology, there, then... was, there was a there was a very serious myth about dolphins. Um, where Dionysus fucked them in the blowhole. Well, Dionysus turned a bunch of them into turned a bunch of pirates into dolphins for being assholes. Oh yeah, I can't roll dice. Sorry, there's no dice to roll in here. Oh, weird. Yeah, it's having a bit of a moment. Okay, um, <clears throat> but you, you know, there's a giant stone door uh, which written in a multitude of languages, uh, of which you can all read at least one, common. Um, it says, welcome all hunters. Oh. Is the door closed? It is. But it is also damaged. You can see that on the outside of the door there are chips and burn marks from where lightning has struck it. What's the door attached 
to? Is it some kind of building or? It looks no. It's actually inset into the mountain. Oh, right. From your this, look, this looks like it's one for you, Lyra. I mean, we're we're not able to talk at the moment because we're cloud. I presume you could pop back. I'm yeah. assuming you can turn back. There is land mass for you to stand on, yes. There is a, a winding path that makes its way down the mountain. Um, for you, Cedric, yes. you know that the, based on the proportions of this, uh, this looks like this entire entrance way is stone giant made. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> rather than dwarvish or any other type of giant. We should be careful of any giants, maybe. Also, I just a thought. I'm quite hurt. I don't know if anyone else is. I'm a tad. And Somewhat, we yes, should sorry. maybe not be just strolling around whilst we were all on death's door. Uh, yeah. I feel like we should get in out of the storm before we stop and rest, though. Um, the, the marks on the door suggest that maybe our foes have tried to break in but failed to succeed. If we can get in, it may well be a place of relative safety. Fair. We just need to figure out how to get in, though. I will... Well, Lyra will step forward and place her hand on the door. Okay. No, place your hand on the door. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> place your hand upon the door. Nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to place both of your hands on the door. I will place both my hands on the door. Ah, nothing happens. Maybe, Maybe you need to push your pearl. Yeah, yeah. Right, a push where you should fall. Maybe your forehead also needs to be resting on the door. I'm presuming there's no, like, handle? There are no handles, no. Ah. Hmm. What there's that? nothing that looks like it's like a bell pull or anything? No, there isn't. Uh, it says, welcome all hunters. It says, welcome all hunters, it says. Yeah. I'll say something oh, like, a hunter seeks admission. I am a hunter. Let me in. I get the feeling this is a puzzle that Luke set up that he doesn't know the answer to and he's waiting for something <laughs> satisfactory for. Which is a classic Ross DM move, but I just I just got the gut feeling that this is what's happening right now. Um, <laughs> Maybe shoot an arrow at it. That's a hunter's weapon. Sorry, Laura, what did you say? Hang around the other side of it. Of the door? <laughs> is it in a wall? Yes. It's in, it's in a mountain. Right, I didn't hear the mountain. I had two totem poles and I thought the door was between them both. I thought oh, it was and it's like a magical, the door's open. Right, the... I thought it was like in the middle of like thin air. Like Minas Tirith. In the first Lord of the Rings. Cool. No, mine's a Moria. I was going to say. I was just, I was just scratching my mind to think: Is he? Is, am I missing something here? Or yes, my lack of knowledge of Lord oh, of the Lord Rings. Rings. Yes. Well, I have to speak the word. And yes. Throw him. It was say friend and enter, but yes. Friend. <laughs> Nothing happens. Oh. Um, right. Are any languages conspicuous by their absence on the door? Um, what languages do you speak? Oh God, now you're asking. Quite all of them. Yes, but can't Kelatar speak all of them? Kelatar can read all languages. He doesn't necessarily know what they are. Common, uh, Draconic, Elvish, Primordial, Sylvan, Undercommon. Um, I, could, I, I could add g giant and goblin to that. <laughs> I mean, I also know deep speech, but I know there's no written form. There's no written tongue for that one. Um, I mean, the only one that would arguably you probably recognise not being a script for, apart from there being deep speech, um, potentially abyssal, but only because it's abyssal. The abyssal language, yeah, the abyssal language doesn't. It's unlikely that abyssal speakers would be coming here, um, sort of, and be expecting welcome language. Whereas, you know, weirdly, infernal, yeah, okay, you get, but because there is a branch which is made of all purely of tieflings. Hmm. 
It kind of made, or there was at least, uh, it kind of made sense. Does anyone have any animal pelt or something that we may have hunted or have from ages? I have a, I have a soul gem. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I have some nasty stuff in my bag of cold. I, 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 I go oh. and sort of tap the gem on the door. Do we not still have the head of M Medusa? No, you got no. rid of it. Okay. I think I do I, I have to Athena. an eye stalk from um, Ralica. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, I, remember you having... I mean, I could try. <laughs> I'll pull maybe, that out. Maybe we offer it or something. And, like, Press it to the door or something. <laughs> even even having been in a bag of holding for a bag of holding, colding. Bag of colding. Yes, I know. It's a bag. Oh, sorry, I misspoke. <laughs> bag of colding for about a week or so. It's still softer than you remember. <laughs> uh... I mean, I don't remember putting it in there because I was feeble minded at the time. <laughs> yes, exactly. But... Just out of habit, you put it in there. Um, Nothing happens, Is, and there's nothing around. No statues or anything. Are there? Uh, are there any? Check. Sure. So Don? I was got. I was sort of saying to Lyra, are, are there any tracks? Maybe this is a false door, and you meant to hunt for the real entrance. I got a twenty on my investigation roll. Okay, you you, see everything. you have a look around um, and look around the, the base of the totems um, and you look through the, the slightest crack in the door and you can see that as you're looking with your height, it's particularly noticeable because you're able to see above and below, but there is something solid. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it's magical. I think they just barred it from the other side. Or... Maybe it is magical and something removes the bar, but if, there's something barring it. Has anyone tried knocking? <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> I feel like Asher would. Hello? You knock. No response. Not that. No, it doesn't work. I will, I will just... try what Foundling suggested and look around for any tracks or sign of a path leading anywhere other than downwards. Make a survival check. Survival. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twenty-three. Okay. Um, you look around and you tracks are difficult to see in stone, um, but what you do notice is where. The stone has been worn smooth by multitudes of feet over the centuries. You notice that around the totem poles themselves, there is some wearing in a circular motion around both sides. What, around both poles? Around both poles. Go and examine the totem poles then. Make an investigation check. You having to remind yeah. myself. Because Cedric did look at them previously, so you can sort of point out some of the bits that he noticed. Not very good. 14. 14. Um, you look around and you do notice that there are some scrapes at certain points of the pole, but you don't know whether those are just from things catching from the battle um, or whether it's just something that's been there for a little while. Um, in passively, though, Cedric, from your, because you have a very high passive perception in investigation, um, you do notice that there is a gap between some of these uh, token poles, as if that when it was, as part of its construction, a new head was placed on top of a stone. It wasn't, they were uh, placed, it wasn't like carved from a single stone. They were placed onto a rod. So they could be rearranged? They could. 
Oh. Or moved. Potentially. Rotated. Potentially. These are movable. Should I try and move some? You try and turn one of them. Which one are you rotating? Whatever one's at shoulder height to me. Okay, so that would probably be the third one up. Sure. You can take hold of it and you turn, and you feel as you turn it, there is some resistance, but you also hear it. Oh. Was that a good noise or a bad noise? Because it half cut out. It was a scraping of stone on stone. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I had half of what I would expect, but it means that there is some wiggle room. I didn't hear like any clinking or clicks or anything like that as I was rotating it. No, nope, you just heard a okay. scrape of stone Does on stone. Does it look different on the inside? Probably more, well, I should be more specific. The scrape on stone, so not just from the head that you're rotating from right. the head above and below it, it's from the door. Right. That does make my I sense. realize as like, I was saying that you're yeah. rotating two stone things. Yeah. That's what you, you yeah, 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 like, well, actually, you rotate more... it. It makes the stone sound of like, yes, yes. <laughs> as, as anticipated. Yes. <laughs> the, the stone is making a stone noise. What's repeat says so. <laughs> You say we couldn't identify what the animals were above the boars at the bottom. Uh, I mean, these, these, the second and third look might they may have been aviary and then reptilian of some description, but de the fine details have been withered away by the wings. I'll try spin another one just to see. I'll spin the, I'll spin the second one a bit lower. Okay, you rotate it. There is none of the same resistance as there was. Keep spinning that it. one. Wait, what? Do I want to? Do you... so, okay. there, so there was there was there was resistance from the uh, just from friction of the two stones, but as you turn it, there's nowhere near as much resistance as the so one above. It's, it's not it's not doing anything, is what I am. Is the and I don't hear any stone scraping from behind the door. No, no, no additional scraping. Can you no. keep turning the third stone? You were just turning. Sure. I turn the third stone some more. Okay, you turn it, and eventually it stops when it's facing into the mountain. Is the Can I turn the same head on the other totem pole? There is the same head on the other totem pole. Can I go and turn it? Yeah, you turn it. You turn it the other way, presumably, anti-clockwise. Yeah. Um, that also, you hear the... Right, I will turn it so that it, it too is facing the mountain. Do you yep. want to go try the door? Let's try the door. Make a strength check. Oh, yeah. I mean, I will I will be assisting with trying this door. With advantage. Shark strength. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Is 80. It, I was going to say, is it 80. strength or is it athletics? Strength. I always just try to squeeze athletics in here. You're not, you're not throwing a door. Um, I'm trying my best to squeeze athletics into the game of D&D. &D. You push it open athletically, and it does. Uh, it takes a little while because it does feel like it's it's a heavy, it, you know, big heavy door. But you are able to open it. Yay! Awesome. Is it dark inside? Uh, very. All of the candles and the lanterns have been extinguished. I will cast light on a stone nearby and throw it deeper into. Uh, into the space. Okay, you light a stone, you see it tink, and you see it blow out. Um, as it lands, it lands next to a body. What? Oh. Oh, this really is the Mind from Warrior, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> There's a body in there. Yes. What kind of body? Uh, sort of reptilian. Ooh. Shall we carry on going? <laughs> it's that I stay out here in the storm. Yeah. So maybe we should get inside, close the doors, and then have a little rest. If you like. Okay. Step inside, close the push the doors close behind you, and as the doors come close. You hear a sort of ratcheting noise as the two stone pillars slide back across. Yeah, of course. 
Uh, although from this side of the door, now that it's closed, you can see that there is a release mechanism on this side of the door. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that sort of clicks upright, you know, like an old fashioned uh, point handle. So we're basically in darkness apart from the stone. Yes. But there are torches and uh, lanterns around, they're just not lit. Let's light some torches. Okay. All off in dark vision. Yeah. Well, here's the thing with dark vision. It extenuates light that's there. There isn't any light. There's a crack in the doors that Cedric can hear through. So light is coming through that. A crack in? <laughs> <laughs> a crack in indoors. Yeah, there's a crack in doors. You suddenly feel very wet around your bones. Yep. Um, no, there is There is oh, a... Get, get a piss and bite. Maybe you can become a wear crack then. <laughs> Yes. You light up. You light some torches, and with the additional light you can see, you can now see around that there are papers and books and scrolls that have been blown around everywhere. How big is the place? It is huge. Okay, so we're in a yeah, not in like a tunnel. We're in like a massive chamber. Okay. That, in fact, actually, as you where you are, it's sort of a twenty foot, and then there's stairs going down that seems to be going out in a conical shape sort of following the general geography of the mountain as it sinks down into a much larger, almost tavern-like chamber, like a general hunting court, like a proper hunting lodge um, that is contained here. And actually, as you light one of the torches up here, a small filament does take along and ignite a chandelier. Oh. Um, so, we're in a big room, but we're not like got our, like a huge drop. No, there's stairs. Well, there is a drop, but there's stairs. There's nice stairs. It's not yeah. like a drop to your death. No. It looks up on this part, it looks like there were, it was basically a reception area. Oh. Um, so it's going up or down? Down. Okay. Um, and then, or sort of a welcome area, and people just sort of there, uh, you know, it looks like there was spaces for people to be on guard, and, you know, yeah. there's racks and all of arms ready for people to defend should they need to. Um, the, most of these of which have blown over. Yeah. Um, and you do actually see that the body that was there is a stuffed crocodile. <laughs> like a taxidermied crocodile. <laughs> nice. Okay. There's no one here, presumably. There is no one here, no. Wow. Is this as good a place as any to have a brief rest? I mean, yes, we have solid yeah. doors to our back that can't be opened silently. And we have a height advantage over anything that may approach from the main chamber below. I want to go and see if there's some nice chairs in there. It looks like there'd be nice chairs. Are, are there any chairs in the, in the voice, in the reception area? There are a couple of like stools and things. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to have your soldiers who are on guard to be too comfortable. So they're, they're functional, they're not elegant. Um, um, what leads off from the reception area? So there's a couple of, couple of doors off to the sides. Uh, they look like they are general rest chambers for the guards um, and an arms room. I look in them. You have a look around. There are racks of weaponry, a few beds, mm -hmm. uh, the sheets of which are blown and scattered all over the place. Um, no people. Anything else? How'd you get out of the reception area? Down. Stairs. No stairs. Just, well, it's just the stairs that lead down. It, basically, it's there's the reception area and then the, the open cavern, effectively, that leads into the main reception hall. Okay. Let's wait here and have a short rest before going further. Okay! So, yeah. Entrance hall, couple of doors off the side of it, stairs down into oh, the main okay. chamber. And then from there, you can see there are multitudes of doors. When you say like reception, I'm imagining like hotels. But no. Kind just, of it. Just a lobby. Effectively, yes. The lobby to a balcony. Yeah. The atrium. Yes. It's a mezzanine floor. <laughs> so it extends over part of the lower cabin. A little bit, yeah. If only so that they can light the chandelier. <laughs> Did the chandelier shine light on anything else, or just the area where it lit it? up the area below? Can we see what's in? Uh, you look over. There are 
plenty of wing back chairs, long tables, again, all blown over. There's some food that has been scattered, rugs, um, a multitude of animal and creature heads that have been bronzed and mounted that are just around the entirety of this chamber, including upwards, so above you where the balcony is. Uh, huge central half fireplace that is not lit and more papers and things that have been blown and scattered. You Does can also see that... like there's anything alive down there? No. Okay, then. Um, it does look like there was a large central library, effectively, in this chamber, where the various Orionids could study. And you can also see that there are multitudes of doors going off, presumably towards rest chambers and things like that. There is a few sets of doors which are giant-sized. Ooh! Um, How far down is it? Uh, 30 feet. People want to wait here, or do we want to go and light the fire down there and sit in some chairs? There is also a bar, which Asher sees. And... Well, Asher's going straight for that bar. There is also a what, sorry? Bar. Bar. Ah. A boozy bar, not a metal bar. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's both, but the one of significance is the boozy bar. I could do with something to drink. I yeah. would go in after at the bar. Okay, let's go down then. Okay. Right. Right. You head down to the chamber and you find yourself, you are at the bar. Uh, again, there is no one there, but there is a plentiful amount of booze. Uh, there's a few bottles which have blown off and have been smashed, but the rest of them seems to be contained within cabinets, um, as well as some casks of ale that are set into quite solid wooden frames. I like the half. You can like the half, yes. And it gives a, that, that's one of the things you notice is the, the entire room is a bit chilly. Like nothing too dramatic is maybe about 10, you know, about 10 degrees. And with your armor, you don't really notice it too much. But once you light the fire, it does warm up the place quite significantly I'm to a like, very comfortable is level. There a, is there a quite comfy looking chair? Oh yeah, there's plenty of comfy chairs. I'm gonna uh, like wiggle a comfy looking chair close to the hearth and just sit in in front of the. Hearth. You sit into it and you just feel the cushioning just all suck mm. you in slightly. And then it eats you. <laughs> yep, <Yeah. laughs> yeah, big wing back chair goes no. This entire mountain's in a bit. Yep. <laughs> Don't give me ideas. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. <laughs> Campaign three, guys. B B B G Mountain Mimic. And a June Mimic in this one has to be bigger. Are we then the campaign after that we have a country mimic? After that, planet mimic. <laughs> we're just we're just parasites at that point. I mean, isn't, that basic, isn't that basically like uh in Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Yeah, you're it's ego. It's ego, yeah. I am planet. I am planet. Yeah, you're effectively parasites on that planet. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, we taking a rest here. I think so. I'm all snuggly. Short rest. Yes. Short rest. Keep, you may short keep, rest. Keeping alert just in case. Okay, you may take a short rest as soon as I stretch. Oh, Ow. Oh no. Let's uh, let's see what that. I would take some time to read some more of the book. I don't know if that happened in this. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm just trying to squeeze in every hour I can, basically. Sure. How much longer have you got left on that? Uh, once I hit the short rest button, I will be able to tell you because I don't want to lose where I was at with the short rest. Okay. Um, Why doesn't it do the thing it says it's going to do? Is everyone else's short rest button, rest button working? Yeah. It's not I adjusting don't... my hit points. Like, I don't, for some reason, that I don't have the short rest button or the long rest button. Uh, it, you signed in. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm in my okay. profile. Usually, you can't if you you can't hit any of the buttons on it if you don't own the character sheet. It is mine. It does. It does let you do it if you are the DM account. So whether she's logged in on her I'm account on or the DM, account. she's not changed some hers. Why? Oh, I got it now. There we go. Yay. Just need to refresh it. No, I don't. I can't refresh it. Oh, 
crushing it and then I did it again and it's finally done it. Yeah. Oh god. Okay. Um oh wow. One, two, three. I'm just gonna let the computer do this. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, damn, son! 12 D8, and I've got 113. Wow, you must have been hurt. Yeah. Did, uh, added your constitution on for each one. It did it, it did it automatically. Oh, you did it off the. Cool. That was a lot of dice. Yeah, that's fair. Um, can you also have a look at Cedric and uh, so Kaltar and Asher? I'm, yes, I'm working on it. Yes, it was main. They were mainly the reason why I raised it because they're very, very hurt. Yes. Fair. Oh boy. Am I touching the ground? I'm guessing I'm just healing naturally as well as. So you are on the ground. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're in a mountain. Touching the ground probably isn't difficult. <laughs> Unless there's like a really, really comfy footstool. Yes. <laughs> He's just sat in a chair going, oh. just takes a boot off and puts one foot on the floor yeah. just to get some healing. I don't know. Point, point of a climber chair and just like one hand drape on the floor. <laughs> so with that rest had is there anything that you would like to do you are also able to get yourself beverages and sup on the I'm fine. I don't need to. okay yeah i know you don't need to you would like to no. <laughs> okay i don't think we'll have an ale there's a very nice dwarven ale yes, excuse me um it's all it's almost it's quite fruity which is weird for a dwarven ale, mm. but it has that sort of richness and full-bodied flavour that you would expect. As you damn it! <laughs> Unfortunately, you do not feel it's alcohol making any difference to your metabolism. That's no, I don't want it to. It's just, <laughs> I've been I've been exercising. I should take on some fluids. Yeah, exactly. Lyra, do you want to be doing anything? Yeah, I'm still, uh, yeah, I'd say reading, trying to squeeze as well yes. as my books. So. Keep you warm. Okay. 142. I think I need like a good one. I think I've only got like one day left, and I need to just spend a good like six hours of that day reading it. Okay. I presume you will want to explore this place once we're rested, Lyra. Indeed, I will. For anyone who is watching this on the VOD and can hear the explosions going off, it is bonfire night tonight, so just an FYI. Yeah. Also, you know, we're not about to let a small war stop us from playing D&D. <laughs> just right. a moment. I like being on top, Bill. You can see everything. Yeah. Um, so, with the short rest completed, what would you like to do? Explore. Okay. Is, well, is there anything in particular you would like us to look out for, Lyra? Signs of any people, obviously. Um, it seems strange there aren't, aren't any here. Yes, obviously. Are, are there any signs of battle, any bloodstains on the floor, anything like that? There are no bloodstains and there's no bodies. It looks like there was some to fight here. Maybe some escapes. Maybe everyone fleed when the big giant came. Fleed. Fleed. Fled. They sprung Fled. up and then got jumped away. Thunder fleas. Fleed. Boy. They flee. Possibly they fled fleetly. Yes. Um, 
can I? I mean, I'm not very good at it, but I'll uh, have a punt. Have a little nose around, see if I can try to figure out what's happened here. Um, Make an investigation check. I, look I would like to guidance myself, please. Okay, guidance yourself, sorry, Laura. I'm just saying, can we start looking through some rooms? She'll get a bit bored to sat on the chair. Sure, do you want to do it with Cedric and help him, or do you want to do it yourself? I'll go over like the other side of the room. Okay. The other ones. I, I'll go with Leela and assist. Okay, Leela, you're being helped by family. Sorry, advantage? Yes. 11 on my investigation. <laughs> Which is okay. why it's like, a, yeah, it's definitely just do something on your own. 23. Okay. Cedric, you, you wander around and you find yourselves into a series of uh, different bed chambers. Um, you manage to find that there are a few personal effects that are in each of the rooms. They're individual chambers, and it seems to be that some of the long-standing members have got their own reserve rooms. Um, one of the things you do notice is that they have got enchanted mirrors that look outside. Um, I look. This is what Cedric finds. Oh, yeah. you were looking at me when you were talking. Sorry. I was just looking around. At, Sorry. It's because I'm looking at the size of you. What's behind it? Sorry. <laughs> um, but they are. It's just mirrors that look outside when you need to, and just to give that little bit of, you know, false daylight and false, you know, well, outside, given that you're in the mountain. Um, Connor has raised an interesting point in the chat. Yeah, the giant yeah. corpse swallower. Um, well, that's why there are no bodies. What? But, um, uh, I mean, the, 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 it looks like everything has been blown around, which suggests the doors were open to the storm at some point. So if you're, uh, you're looking around, Cedric, you don't find anything of any okay. interest. Um, Leela, you look about and it's been on the other side of the room you are drawn to a sort of to a room which has a, a almost alchemical smell that sort of phosphorus sulfur metal tang to it in the air as you go in you see that there is with founding in tow there are racks of weaponry it looks like this is a oh, racks of bodies <laughs> <laughs> no there are racks yeah, like a buffet yeah <laughs> uh there are there are just racks of, of various weaponries and blood vials that are set up uh, across this sort of in these sort of cold sunken chambers and you look and you see that above the racks of bundles of arrows and weaponry it says uh, things like Celestial and aberration, beast, uh, dragon, fey. And you kind of get the sense that with your particular mind, you sort of piece together the process here. These weapons, these weapons are specifically designed for killing that type of creature. Yes. You say blood vials. Like yes. Vials of blood. Vials of blood. Why would they? Uh, you understand that this is part of... Actually, do you want to make an arcana check? Because why not? Leela would probably understand this, but make an arcana check. Leela would. Laura make an arcana check. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I'm keeping it. Uh, that is a 28. Okay. The blood vials are most likely from the type of creature that they are doing. And as part of the infusion to make a weapon to be particularly strong against it, it needs that type of blood. That's as what the, I the, thought, the... so I'm not all dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you get the sense. Uh, the, the, of, this is this eight. is like the barrier for for any vampires that visits. Yeah. Um, so there are bundles of arrows of slaying of all different creature types, including ooze, which is really confusing because oozes don't have blood. You're not quite sure how that one works. Jelly. Um, and there are short and long swords that are there for each creature type as well. Is there, is there anything that, like, they have weapons for visionaries? Depends on the visionary. There might be. Oh. I mean, we kind of know... We know the C1 is a giant. Elemental. 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 And... We know we're dragon. Dragon. We know fiend? Is it fiend? It is a fiend, yes. He's a devil. Oh. 
So I meant the creature kind is fiend rather than devil rather. Yes. Than, yeah. Maybe I take some. I don't know. I turned to Fang and like, do you think this would be helpful? I certainly have the ability to use another weapon. Oh. I do have a few more arrows. I've lost. But a maybe we should ask Clara. I think this is technically hers now. Okay. Well, we'll tell people what we found, and um, and um, yeah, we'll car I'll carry on to okay. the next door. Mm, keep going. Uh, eventually, you find a few more of these bed chambers. You find a kitchen, which is Ooh. magically enchanted. It seems that it seems to just provide food. Oh, guys, I found fish. <laughs> um, and any element of us being discreet was lost. <laughs> this is Leela! Um, I mean, the discreet thing kind of went when we lit all the chandeliers and then the massive bonfire. Yeah. Bubble bonfire. Um, which actually is surprisingly not smoking out the place. Um, yeah, not uh, Wouldn't happen to be a teleportation circle here, would there? Make an investigation check. Oh. Lisa and family stop to lunch while they're a certain Better time. investigation check. Oh, 18? 18. You do find that there is a teleportation sigil uh, in one of the chambers set off to the back. Right. I will take the time to learn the circle, even though I know it's not sort of functional at the moment. Yes, it's right. one of those that's not technically functional at the moment, but it does help you, it would help you get there if you're using a plane shift spell. I would also like to do that because I have a gate spell, and that's a thing, isn't it? Didn't we find out? I can't remember now. I'm going to learn. Uh, plane, plane shift, certainly. It lets you... Um... Gate but also, if, if this place ever gets back to being on the material plane, it will still function as a teleportation circle. Uh, plane uh, shift, I... yes. Yeah, I think it's plane shift. Yeah. Um... Okay, so the two of you sort of study that for a little bit, and people continue looking around. You find... I have a nice sandwich. You have a nice sandwich. You you look at the plate, and you say the type of sandwich that you want, and it appears on the plate. I would like a... Ooh. A meatball sandwich with lots of cheese. Thanks. A sandwich appears, regular sort of like proper thick slices of bread, seven large meatballs that are contained within it, and just half a block of cheese, maybe about that thick, that just sits across. <laughs> it's like someone has taken a block of cheddar and has just sliced it that way. Just like slice it right through the middle, the wrong way of cut any way would any normal person would cut cheese. Yeah. The cheese is almost as thick as one of those slices of bread. I'm all for that. So sweet, I will take my sandwich and go and sit by the fire again and eat my sandwich. The fire's heat does melt the cheese slightly. Oh, um, but from the looking around that you're doing, you do find that there is what presumably is the chamber of Orion of the mountain. And you would know, Lyra, that Orion of the mountain is the head of the entire guild. Normally, was the head of the entire guild. Was the head, yes. Now, technically, it's Orion of, you know, the Deep. Because she's the only other Orion other than you, and she has seniority. Yeah. Um, this room is set for a stone giant. It is huge. The bed is a full giant size, carved from rock, but stuffed with feathers. I haven't eaten so much, I was going to bounce on <laughs> um, There are what look to be his particular trophies, or their particular trophies, you don't know the gender of that, Orion, um, that were upon the wall, including the head of what looks to be um, a silver dragon. Um, but written underneath it in giant, which Cedric can translate for you. Uh, says Orion uh, arrested this creature by hand. Ooh. So it seems like this what this dragon was, and it was entirely possible that this was the task that um, made him 
the Orion or made them the Orion. Um, similar as you had the stag that you had to hunt, it might have been that they had the silver dragon that they had to hunt. Um, for all the trophies before that, say um, a naming giant that is incredibly difficult for anyone to pronounce. Um, but it is a name as opposed to the title Orion. <coughs> At the back of this room, there is a huge door with a symbol of a full moon embossed upon it in silver. Door, you said. Door, yes. Stone giant sized again? Uh, bigger. Bigger? Yes. We'll try and open this door. As you place your hands upon it, you feel a buzzing come from the uh, Hunter's Prospect and your guild brand sort of glows a soft silver and the door itself just opens oh. at your touch. Easy. Easy. You had to it's say. Black. And what is on the other side? There is a deep staircase leading down into a vast cavern. Uh, where there is a sort of shimmering ethereal light at the bottom of it. Is anyone else in the room with me? Cedric? Yeah, I think I've been mostly following it because I've been doing translating as well. Good. I think I should go down. I should we go make the others aware first? Or is this something yeah. you want to do on your own? Um, might be something to do on my own. Do you want me to wait here? Um, yes, please. And if anyone asks, tell them where I am. We'll do. Okay. You head down the stairs? I will start down the stairs. Okay. As you descend down the stairway, the room feels a little colder than before. Slight blue hue, because I can. Nice. Um, so you... immersive. Camera was malfunctioning. Sorry. <laughs> <Come down. laughs> Camera is not malfunctioning, damn it. Um, you descend down these stairs and you see that there is a vast chamber. In the center of this room, there is a pool of water that is shimmering with moonlight over 200 feet across, even though no light can enter into this room. At the center of the pool, there is a small island which has a nest of down contained within it. Within that nest is an ethereal silver colored hind. It looks familiar to you. It's the one you hunted down previously. And as you approach to the edge of the water, his head comes up and just looks at you. I'll kneel down. And uh, watch the hind for a moment, see if it does anything. looks at you and raises its head slightly and dips it. I will dip my head in return. You hear a voice in your head say, approach Orion. How deep does the pool look? Very shallow. Like maybe half an inch. Oh, right. <laughs> I will. Um, but the first thing, then you fall. No. We'll stand up Go. and approach. Okay. You step forward and come towards the hind. And she watches you as you step upon the island. So. 
and Orion still lives. Does the voice sound familiar? Uh, kind of. It kind of, it does have that sort of essence of Artemis behind it, but as if this creature is maybe an aspect of her rather than the full voice coming through. It's entirely possible this is just one of her chosen animals that has taken on her voice because it's the only one that it knows. More than one, my lady. Orion of the Deeps still holds the guild strong in uh, in the deeps. Variety. That is good to know. Many an Orion has come seeking wisdom from behind. What would you ask of me? Orion of no guild. Are your hunters still abroad, my lady? Some, some do quest beyond the reach of this realm. There are some who are on legendary quests of their own. Some in Hellas Gracia, some in continents beyond even that. Though none north. Only further west. But they are beyond my reach. I'm glad they didn't fall with the rising of the visions. I'm aware, my lady, I am under a curse. And yet, it's in my mind to bear it and to allow it to continue. But I would seek guidance on the subject. The head tilts somewhat and sniffs. The scent of the sea is within your blood. Whilst it is a choice to maintain what some would call a curse, others may see as a blessing from Poseidon. It is your choice if you wish to contain it, but know that it is a gift, a weapon, a curse, but it is one that fluctuates with the moon. And being in the center of power for the moon goddess may make it unpredictable. Aha, uh -huh. why would Connor hesitate? Thank you for your words. Can you tell me what occurred here? What happened to the Rhine of the Mountain? Crack of thunder. A strong wind blew. The doors forced open. The air sucked from within, the bodies falling, 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 swept away, away, screams, screams, 
Take a look at home. We have dealt with the, the corpse swallower. One who did this, I think. And for that, I and the Lady Artemis would bequeath unto you a boon, if we can grant it, that you may bequeath to any of your party as an offer of our thanks, as well as a gift. It is something that we can grant and we shall provide it to the ally of your choosing. I see. Thank you, that's very generous. May I know what the gift is or the gift is something that was taken from a great hunt long ago, from the last of its kind. A dragon of the purest crystal contained within an elixir will provide you with the majesty of a dragon for but an hour. And then she speaks a vial containing a dragon scale that you recognize by shape but by form is a complete translucent floating within this liquid. Orb of glass just seems to float up into your hands. I will pass this to my dear friend Asher, when I see her. <laughs> Have you any particular tasks for me? Rebuild, clear there, Yavolwa, Orion of no home. Find somewhere to lay roots. I know where I want to build my guild. I will. I will act on this when we have completed our task. Kind nods. Good. Seize that destiny to become Orion of the North. That is where you wish to build. Or do I misread your heart? At one point, I thought so. But I do not think... I think the Orions are still needed. The Orionids are still needed here on Fioros. 
and if the citizens agree, I would like to build a new hall at the Grove. and take up the name of Orion of the Horizon. We will be pleased to see such a name bestowed upon you. So tell me, What boon would you seek of us before I must rest? Um, out of character, hmm. do, do I know what might be encompassed within that? That's quite a, that's quite a um, <laughs> wide ranging. Yeah, the back of the player's handbook. <laughs> It is a it's a tricky thing to decide what a god might be willing to provide and how it might be interpreted. Uh, but it is your choice. You are aware that gods cannot undo other gods. Um, spells or curses or anything like that. So whatever you would wish to try and complete and whomever you may wish it to be bestowed upon. It does not have to be yourself. Oh, this is a lot to try and think yeah. of. I think what I would wish for most is not within your power, for it would uh, go against the workings of another god. Their fates have been sealed and intertwined. Apart from them, I feel that most of my friends are largely secure in themselves. I have a request for myself, which I hope might be within your power. And speak it. I would, uh, I would ask that the enmity I've gained with my people might be lessened. I fear constantly that I am a hair's breadth from death. And my former liege lord. Behind nods. This we can do. to at least lessen the rage that is within their hearts. Though it may take time. I will come to you again when it is safe for you to return home. Thank you, my lady. Just 
looks around the chamber. Treat this place well, Orion. For this is the home of Isildra. Does that name mean, mean anything to me? You get the sense that it is her name. As in behind? Behind, yes. I will make sure it is treated with reverence. And go and be sure that this place will forever remain sacred to the Orionids. Take whatever you will from the chambers above, weapons, knowledge. Just close the door on your way out. I will nod again and go back up the stairs. Mm -hmm. You're still alive then? Yes. I didn't hear any screaming or anything, so <laughs> I'm guessing there was nothing down there. Uh, I had what you might call a religious experience. You wanted to pray alone? Sometimes that sort of thing is best alone. Okay. Well, if you had a nice time. Then that's all that's important. <laughs> Shall we go back to the others now? Yes, I did find something that uh, it might be useful. That's good then. So the praying worked. The praying, praying always works. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's go update the others then. So you return to the chamber where the rest of the party are currently. We probably all have sandwiches now. We've all had some substantial sandwiches. Yes. Asha seems a lot more aware of what's going on. <laughs> um, now nah, she's just been drinking behind the bar. Absolutely hammered. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it just poke the sword in Shatterfang into it and just went, Aww. Asher, don't drink this now. I will pass her what, the, uh, the file. On earth is it? Uh, it is a divine gift. That's a bit much to be calling yourself that already. I'm mean, <laughs> grateful, nonetheless. I think this is quite powerful. In what way? I was told it would bestow the majesty of a dragon on the person who imbibed it, not just any dragon. A crystal dragon. For now. Does anyone. Crystal dragon? I was told it was an now extinct race. Oh. Well, I'll treat it with the greatest of care until I absolutely have to. Absolutely. Give me 15 minutes. I'll do a shiri with it. What time of day is it now? Um, it's difficult to tell, only that it is day. Being this right. high up in the clouds, the sun is just sort of there. But also being in the plane of air, it's a little bit tricky to discern what the regular normal day-night cycle is. Uh, Comment for your inventory, you can put in Potion of Dragon's Majesty. Um, I feel regal just having it. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of adventures, have you been dicking around with our stuff from beyond? Who? Yeah. You. No. I haven't got yeah. a password for it anymore. I tried to log in earlier and got rejected because I didn't know Ross's thing. <laughs> so. Uh, oh. no. So it's Ross that best time when we're stuff from beyond. Should have known he'd give us back. Why? What, what happened on beyond? Just for uh, it just was being a bit glitchy earlier on. It ticked off a few people's items for some reason. It was working fine for Glad Kalata, Asha, and Cedric. That's all I'm saying. Make of that what you will. <laughs> no idea. Oh, uh, no, it's not. Oh, it is for me. I'm missing my belt. Oh, that's major. If it's like my little stuff, <laughs> it might just be the only clip. Yeah, yeah, I just logged in and my, my strength is plus three, which is uh normal. <laughs> oh god, I only feel slightly above average. Uh inventory. Um but in terms of in terms of the actual time from when you got up, it's probably and you look maybe three hours after you got up, so probably around eleven. Right. As far as you know, time in the elemental plane of air travels at the same rate it does. As far as we know. As far as you know. I was missing quite a few bits. What? You wouldn't notice, but the manual of bodily health, manual of alacrity and speed, and my belt, and a few other little bits. I just presumed Ash was really weak. Yeah. <laughs> so many hit points, you didn't realise a few of about 30 had gone missing. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of magical things and equipment, uh, Lily and I discovered a room that appears to contain weaponry designed to slay particular kinds of creatures. We thought we could take some suited to tackling the remaining visionaries, but as your technic, it seems you're the Avionid currently in charge of this place by being the only one here, we thought we'd better ask you first before we just started taking things. That's uh, that's very thoughtful of you. Um, but I've been told we can take what we need. Farming <laughs> <laughs> gathers weapons. Are there multiple arrows of slaying? Yes, there are bundles. 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 Are there multiple swords, or just one sword for each variety? Well, there's a there's a couple of there's maybe half a dozen long swords and short swords of each type. Holy moly! How many arrows in a bundle? Twenty. So, is there a bundle of each type of slate? Or multiple bundles of each type? Oh, we need to get some of these to the armies. It looks like, much like the kitchen, the process here is automated to keep refreshing it until the blood runs out. Oh my god! Oh wow. But it is a lengthy process to get these things done, but the arrows are a little easier to do because they're single use. Yeah. Um, blades do not require attunement. Yeah, so founding will take a elemental dragon and fiend was the other one we're going to face, isn't it? Short sword? Uh, no. Uh, oh yeah, you've got fighters, so you can, you can use anything. It's more that uh, also founding has decent strength when the arms are out. Yeah. You want yeah. short or long swords? I'll, I'll go for long swords. Okay, I will produce those and put them in your inventory at some point this week. Okay. I think we should make, take as many bundles of dragon and fiend slaying arrows as we can. Because um, we don't know what demon, uh, devilish incursion there's been. Uh, Namor. 
and we do know that there might be multiple uh, dragon riding or multiple dragons there. So yeah, as many bundles as there currently are. There are five of each type. So there's a hundred arrows. Yes. Excellent. When we meet up with the army, we can distribute those. Yeah. I've found out that the Hunters of Artemis, they're still alive, but they're not on Fioros currently. They're elsewhere and probably not available for help. There are some to help you rebuild, so that is good. Well, the hunters might not, might not be. I don't know how much building work they do, but uh, it's certainly good that they're still around. Yeah, di difference between the hunters of Artemis and the Orion. It's Beautiful. Yeah. Don. Uh, well, yeah. Sorry. No, it's fine. Right. Anything else we need to do while we're here? You said there was. Are there any bits? Wait, what? <laughs> sorry, carry on, Tom. Sorry, I started talking. Um, I said there. You said there were was a library with information on sort of prey. Yes, there are books of hunting and different species and races, uh, weak points, stories about previous guild hall uh, Orions and other members' achievements, um, tracking habits, feeding habits, food habitat, that sort of thing, uh, weak points including some very d graphic diagrams. Um, Shoot in the vulnerable. Exactly. <laughs> uh, might be worth taking some... How I mean, you say there's a library. There's lots of books here. There are um, hundreds of books and scrolls, that, and a lot of them are scattered. It seems that when whatever the great gust was that came through this place and took everything out, it just sucked things off the walls. We'll look for anything on dragons, elementals, and fiends, I guess. Okay. Easy enough to do. Um, Devils, in case that makes a difference. Yeah. Um, it takes your Takes you a little, you know, it doesn't take you too long to find a good stack of reading materials on each. Um, as well as particularly looking at denizens of the plane of water. Yeah. Um, but you managed to get yourself a decent stack. So it depends on how long you want to stay here. One have any thoughts? Got the door shut at once. Maybe get this weapons to the people that need them. Yes, hmm. we could probably do with me to get with the armies the assault on the main city is probably going to be our next challenge in the dictionary fight we've still got a fair amount of time with the uh, wind walk on us haven't we yes so we could just like turn into clouds and lie to where they are. You could. Yeah. 
assuming you don't get lost. I'm a ranger, we can't get lost except by magical means. You're on a different plane. Good to be nice away. But there is a way here on this plane. There's another way to get between here and the plane of the material plane. Well, don't we know on the material plane? I'm a ranger who specialises in interplanar stuff. I really should know this stuff. <laughs> it's a it's a bit of a fine area when a plane rips its way through into <laughs> material and stars overlapping. It's a bit of an unknown. Mm. Find out. Should we give it a try? Yeah. Why not? Guys. Okay then. Uh, Gundamit does have to recast so that he can cast it on himself. And me. And Lever. Um, but with a new wind walk passed upon each of you. Actually, now that I think about it, Gundamit can only do it once a day. Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter what's different. It's Gundamit. It's powerful. Um, he tries really hard. Yeah. He expends a different spell slot. Um, Uses a legendary action. His <laughs> lair action. Uh, so, Lyra, if you are leading the uh, guidance on this, make a survival check. Oh. Can I assist? Uh, you no. Cloud fall. You can't speak to each other. Yeah, you'll be like. <laughs> Veil it through interpretive dance. Yeah. It's a little bit. Twenty-eight. Okay. You're able to, you follow the pathway of the mountain down, uh, but at greater speed rather than just sort of traversing it on foot um, until you eventually feel a, a pressure change in your ears, which is weird when you're missed. Um, you have no ears. But you find yourself coming down from the clouds and coming out of it, and you can see that there is effectively this thunderhead that is stretching its way, casting a deep shadow across the uh, cavern that is Gaia's vengeance and stretching its way towards Maymore. Oh. From there you are able to find effectively what is north and you can see Maymore off in the distance where there is that swirling vortex above. You can also see just glinting up more so Cedric than anyone else because fucking passive perception of 72. Even as a cloud. Um, Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cedric can see the individual water atoms that make up our fog cloud. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can see the the glint of the sea that is over by Solrisa that is encroaching upon Maymore as well. You can see the burning rivers of fire that is going slowly up the channel from uh, Ms. Tumal. You can see the cracking of the earth that is slowly roiling its way towards Maymore as well. You can see where these, these elements are starting to join oh, together into oh, one central right point. In the of it all. Awesome. That looks so cool. It does look pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. I want that on like the poster. Or just a I want some art. Yeah, stuff. I know, right? Um, but you can also see where there are Reflections of light that are coming from the base of the mountain that is where Maymore is. Without getting closer, you can't really see what these are. Which, because you are able to do, you are fast and you can fly. Let's, let's fly. And you're going vaguely in that direction anyway, so. Let's fly! All right, you all fly north, heading in the, the general direction towards Maymore, following guys as I. As you get closer and um, start taking a veer around to the left to go towards the um, towards where the army are set up, you can see that what was reflecting the light are fingers and pillars of ice that have jutted out around the base of the mountain. Is that figurative? Fingers or like actual, it's like a giant ice hand. Is figuratively like needles of ice. Okay. It's just the best way of describing it. Basically, yeah. of ice. 
um, rather than just sort of hands crawling out. Um, and you can see, even moving at the speed you are occasionally slowing down, you can see the intermovements of small flying devils, imps and spine devils that are darting around, communicating. Love the spine devils. Um, you see a legion of hideous, fleshy blobs sort of roiling their way towards uh, the outer limits of one of these icy protrusions that seems to be set up as barricades being led by a devil made purely of chains wielding a whip and lashing at them as these fleshy creatures which uh, are fiends one of your favourite enemies, Lyra? Forget. No. Uh, dragons. Monstrosities. Aberrations and elementals. Okay, you don't... You may have an idea there. I'll make an arcana check. You might have an idea. You might be got some really good. Oh, 24. You know these are Lemrays. Um, these are sort of the lowest level of devils that are basically cursed souls. The lowest of the low. Um, being led by chain and bone devils that walk around. You also notice a few quite upright, <coughs> sort of almost gossiping with each other um, of the Erinyas that are just discussing with each other and keeping an eye on things. Um, occasionally you see some of the imps flying inside and going and going deeper within the mountain. Fly around there seeing this hideous arrangement occurring. Um, in fact, as you're going, everyone make a perception check for me, please. Why we bother? It's going to be said that he sees everything. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I've just seen a huge roll. I rolled the same as Asher. Is, is, is it in a bakery on the far side of the continent? <laughs> huge... Foundling. What did you get? Nine. Leela? 25. Lyra? 29. Asher? 29. Cedric? 28. Kalata? Oh, I haven't done Kalata, I forgot. Oh, it's in Lyra! We did it! Oh, Jesus, we beat it. 30. Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> he critted plus 10. That's it, I'm rolling my D10. <laughs> this roll's important. <laughs> so, uh, apart from Foundling, <laughs> nothing escapes that gaze from the party. It's like an all seeing eye. <laughs> the group of you notice that there are machines in place. Oh, no. Almost like carts uh, with you know four wheels and hanging off the back, off the front of them are uh, pronged forklifts, like uh, in Robot Wars, effectively Matilda's tusks. <laughs> cool. And I understand that reference. Hanging off the back. So what hanging off the back? Wrecking balls, like a oh no, oh the war machine things. Yep. Sorry, these are among the among the ice spikes. They are behind behind the battlements, effectively. Right. Sorry, these are the enemy machines. I thought yep. you were describing our machine. No, no, we don't get machines. <laughs> No machines for you. When, what wasn't that what the army was going to do while well, they stopped? Yeah, you stopped. haven't got there yet. You don't know. I thought that was what we said when we talked. That's what they were doing. Yeah. Um, was like, giant size robot wars. <laughs> you observe this for a while and try and make a count of the various machines. The ones you can see on this side, you count thirty. Um, in various states of preparedness, but 
Uh, Lena, with your sort of engineering mind, do you get the sense that they won't be long before these things are functional? Oh, no! It looks like they were brought over, mostly made, and they just needed a few bits bolted on. What the are they... Are they like the ones that wore on the blimp? No. They're completely different? Yeah, they are. They're like... They're like Mad Max mobiles. Oh, because the ones on the blimp were like scoops, weren't they? Yeah, they were They were mechs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of, Dom. Kind of. Um, What's the Matildas? Effectively, yeah. She had a chainsaw on her butt. She had a flywheel. Um, it, was a ch- uh, it was a chainsaw, and then it got changed to a flywheel. Oh, there you go. I got that twice. Um, <laughs> you were that wrong. I know, right? <laughs> I don't remember the latter series. Anyway, um, so yes, with that information, do you continue on? Not much, say. We, not much we can do as clouds. All right, you fly on and make your way to uh, the uh, to where the camp has been set up. You find a spot to land and to return to your physical forms. Uh, a few of the soldiers that spot you immediately take their hands to their weapons before they recognize Asher in particular. What are you, uh, doing you just appear. We it do. does terrify, it does do. startle people somewhat. Oh, um, I like it. Keeps them on their toes. They're ready for action. Um, one of the Valkyries that has seen you said, are you here to see the general? And the chief did. While we're here, why not? Okay, well, we'll take you, and they turn around and they lead you towards the command tent uh, you had seen previously when it was set up uh, in in Alfheim, um, but has since been taken down whilst they're on the march. As you go about, you see that there are, there's a surprising amount of work has gone into these things. There are trebuchets, there are... Um, ballista that have been built um that are fully portable and can be you know dragged by horse or by man if needed um nothing major for scaling the ice you notice as you went by but that sort of thing isn't you know if you can break through it doesn't really make much difference as you approach the uh the supply tent and sort of wraps you see that the flaps itself are are closed uh, and look like black raven wings. There's one of the battery knocks on the central pillar uh, and announces the warriors known as the wandering stars are present, chieftain. Your uh, your majesty. And you hear Ryan Big's voice say, let them in. She pulls back the flap and you step inside. As you enter into the room, it feels it's warm in here. It seems like there's been a few people that have been standing around looking over the map, and there's a few bodies that turn around and have a look at you. Um, various commanders that you vaguely recognize from your time as an in here, you are Asher. Um, but significantly, you also notice that there is Chieftain Ranveig and Jerenalus. Well, hello, everyone. Out. Rambeg nods. Uh, welcome back. You should be stand, stand, please. Um, Dorellis also nods as he's kind of, he is aware that that was more intended towards him than to her, but he just sort of gestures with the hands with a smile. Um, Rambeg says, uh, It's good to see you all alive still. Um, what happened and what have you been up to? Shall we show them our new bling? New bling! Absolutely. And put on the table the soul gems that are full. Okay. Five crystals Five time. on the table. Ooh. Five time visionary champion. <laughs> you have been busy. Um, wow. So three left to go then. Two in Maymore, one in Sol Risa. 
is impressive. That's not all. We told you about the army approaching from south, didn't we? Yes, yes, we had uh, Kalatar's missive. They, they are without their, their visionary that they are still coming, we think. Yes, we've um, we set up some defences for an earth and encroachment, but the good news is we do at least have a flying legion of the you know, Pegasi. We also now have journalists as magicians, which is a much improved and the warriors as well, which is excellent reinforcements. The uh, the armies of um, Ms. Dumal, the fire visionaries, are, as you know, on our side and approaching Namor from the other side. Yes, from the east. But oh, southeast, southeast at least. The lieutenants of the visionary, we haven't accounted for all of them and I believe that we think that at least one of them is an assassin of some kind which one so like, she turns and just sort of shuffles through a, a map and a few other bits of papers and pulls out the now familiar uh, board with the various visionary names and uh, formulas for the cultists. Um, she just scratches off the ones which have been defeated. Try and find my own copy of that. Yeah. Mm. Give me Of course, it's the one at the back. Um, so, Master of Storms, the Forest Guard, the ever moving boulder, Undergrowth, and the Scorch Lord are all defeated. Yes. Are they captains as well, or not? War. I think is in charge of the army of the ever moving boulder. Although I believe Shield was taken down as part of the fight. I might be remembering that wrong. Yeah, yeah that's not right. right. I don't know if we ever found out who Dagger was. And you haven't as of yet. But we can assume some sort of assassin. Um, soldier and weapon. I mean, did, did we decide that Foundling, your creator was part of the Scorch Lords. It seems, certainly seems likely. No, we, it's obviously hard to have definitive proof. You were told by Kendall that she was the craftsman. She was the craftsman. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, I remember. And she escaped us. For now. Soldier and weapon. We don't know. Uh, we know the Tarkinist is dead. Should be. We killed her enough times. Well, didn't we find out that that was a simulacrum? Did 
and she turned to ice. She did. Arcanist is very much alive. Ah. Missing a few items, but... Uh... Razor? Did we ever meet Razor? No, you didn't. No. Um... Uh, no, I think you did kill Razor. Razor is dead. I think that was one of the that was a casualty during the war when you're in um, Alfheim. Uh, I don't think we ever met either Argonaut or Illuminated. No. Just when you think you've made a dent, that's a list. Ryder and Mask are both dead. Yes, Blizzard is also dead. Just an FYI. Oh, Blizzard is dead. In Blizzard was the Ranger. Blizzard was the storm giant that you defeated on the boat before you took on the visionary. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Infiltrator might be the most worrying person that's still alive. Or alive as far as we know. Because Infiltrator is a quickling and is very good at impersonating others. That is a concern. Uh, Am I able at that comment to um, stare down the room and see if anyone flinches at that? Make an insight check. Because this is the room you should be most concerned about with that role. Uh, what is that? Oh, and 23. Okay. You look around, studying each individual person. No one seems to have reacted to that, other than a few shifty looks at each other. Yeah. Um, Ralicor is dead, so Seer. Yep. Walker is no longer a problem. I don't think we ever met Salvager. Salvager was one of the kobolds. Um, he was one of the he was the junk mage that you met way back in uh, in episode twenty six. Yeah. Say it no, that, it was episode twenty seven when you all came back to life. Um, episode twenty six is when you fought against Radical the first time. Right. No, you weren't, you weren't there. This was way before you. This is back when you still had Dan. This before we even started streaming. Um, so he might still be around, as far as we know. Possibly, he could have also been turned to crystal by Radical. Um, we know um, Zealot and Bloodline are dead. Mm -hmm. Charmer, we're not so sure of. No. Uh, Gorgon is dead. What's the latest we knew about Spore, about Ewan? Uh, and his dragon. The last you were aware of was the fight that you had in Belgabad's chambers. Yes. Uh, he and the dragon, who is Acrimony, fled. The dragon was Acrimony. Yes, that has also been that has been confirmed. So yes, although we've got a, a fair number of the visionaries, there's a certain number of operatives still at large, and some we definitely ought to be worried about. Do we well, think that Ruin is currently with Geryon? Seems possible. That does seem likely. If you've taken out the Seer, then having a powerful Arcanist is probably going to be the best way of keeping an eye on everyone. Hmm. We will have to strengthen 
our defenses against potential incursions from infiltrator checks for duplication magic illusions may need to put in some sort of psychic checks i'm not sure how we would do that uh, might i leave that with you sir journalist just sort of squeezes the bread of his nose uh, yes yes we can manage that Is so there anything else that you can tell us that might be useful uh, as, as preparation or we might be coming up against? <clears throat> what you mean? You might have? We can tell you about the two visionaries inside Maymar, I suppose. Other than that, I'm not aware of anything special. We did see a number of the devils at the base of Namor as we were approaching. We can tell you about those and their machines, of course. Those machines sound troublesome. We need to take them off the board quickly. If they're given a chance to run rampant it would take a lot of our ground troops out. We might need to get some sort of strike force to go through in the cover of night and take them out. Strike force! And even then, they're devils. They're night. <sighs> going in at night is not going to work. Going in the day is just as obvious. Hmm. In some ways, it would be easier if they were attacking us, we would be able to prepare defences against them, but... So is the way those that are laying siege always find it more difficult than those who are defending. Unfortunately, these aren't armies that we can just starve out. Not if they've got reinforcements coming in from the southwest. Mm. Potentially coming in from the north as well. Some of them don't even eat in the conventional way, I think. Well, quite. <sighs> What's the problem? We don't know what's going on over there. The problem is, is that they've got those war machines that could come out and slaughter us relatively quickly. So we need to take them off the board, get some sort of surprise attack, or get into a position where they can't use them. So they look like they're ground based? Yes. Well, we do have an optional third force. But I'm not sure if it could be trusted. What do you mean? A long while ago, we had a small trip to the elemental plane of Earth. We uh, did a favour for a large political party out there, you could say. Um, and in return, he gave us, and I present this little encrusted egg. A capsule containing the promise of 10,000 Earth elemental plane troops. That is a useful boon. Why do you say it can't be trusted? Well, we know that we're currently going to be attacked at any given point by an army commanded and consisting the majority of Earth elementals. And I don't really want to question anyone's allegiances. The last thing I want to do is summon 10,000 troops and have them turn upon us. Hmm. Let's see. There's nothing stopping us from, I don't know, doing an aerial drop of said item into the middle of that army and 
causing at least some chaos. No, that's what I was thinking. It might be that might be the best way to disable some of those items. If it's just an instantaneous boop, there it is. Then as far as I'm aware, that is exactly what it is. It's a boof, there it is. Hmm. That would be incredibly useful. Are they slaves? Yes. <sighs> Distasteful. Ill moral, but as are most things are in war. But they are... <sighs> Do you know if the their lord is affiliated with the cults? The opposite, I believe. We fought for him against members of the cult. You did. Then I would say you have very little to worry about there. Because if they are his slaves, they will be under some sort of compulsion to fight for him against his enemies. There we go, then. You want to weigh laced to some siege equipment of theirs? If your, kitchen, if your kitchen sink was made of stone, I would say to throw it. It's even better than that. That mountain is made of stone. And they could just pass straight through it. Yep. Hmm. A perfect ambush. He looks at you from across the table and says, would you be able to get it inside their defences? I can get in anywhere and stare at Cedric. Well, that, that's good. Do you, do you have... I mean, my friend here can create a gate leading to any point in space and time. Oh, sorry. So, you were staring at Cedric because I had a spell, not because I was giggling at the innuendos. Sorry, I yes, understand. Yes. No. <laughs> you have a useful spell, and I wanted to glaze over what was put... Sorry, I didn't realise that was my cue. Yes, I can get us pretty much anywhere that is good and we wouldn't even have to stay there we could go through and come straight back i will need a night's rest in order to ponder how to cast this spell though i mean in order to get the maximum shock value out of it presumably we want this to be happening shortly before the armies engage no, we probably wouldn't want him to get anywhere near. Personally. I can see values in both sides, actually. Also, just as a reminder that the gate is only open for one minute, so we would need to move through as many as quickly as possible. Brennalus seems pondering at the moment. That might be beneficial for us as well, the magicians, or at least getting some of the warriors through. Perhaps not using a spell of that magnitude, but an arcane gate. Well, several of them consecutively we could burst them through and get closer in an instant cause some chaos there. We can anchor a point inside the mountain, inside the ice defences. Yes, that would work. Hmm. What of 
So dragons, though, how will we deal with those? Because we, the devils will be immune to the fire that they breathe. And we are not. That's debatable. Most of us are not immune to the fire that they breathe. Why is it always dragons? Dragons. It's almost like the game is called Dungeons and Dragons. Um. We have a great concern over the, the sky support that they have on that side, says Randeg. Um, and I we don't have much in the way of defense. We have the Pegasus Riders. Do you have archers? Oh, we do have archers, yes. Ah, these might help. Do you have arrows? Right. These are arrows of dragon slaying. These are arrows of fiend slaying. I see. They should be used very judiciously because they can be only be used once, but they might help. No, that's good. We can take out a good swath of their army, well, we can take out at least 100 of them quickly, wound them somewhat, it makes them a little bit more hesitant. The dragons probably are too strong to be taken out by a single arrow, but if we could transfer the enchantment to a ballista. Now that interests me greatly. Hmm. Uh, Jerome, I'm already on it, bear with me a second. Well, while you're getting into Jerome's, I'm just going to say I've now got this wonderful vision of Asher being launched from a ballista to a dragon. Now that's a no, that's Now, funny. yes, if we could transfer it to a, a human. <laughs> um, one of the lower mages sort of scuttles into the tent, realizes that he's just walked in without being announced, bows sheepishly, takes one of the arrows, and then just scuffles off. Well, you've either been robbed or. Uh... He's one of mine. Helpful. <laughs> He's one of mine. Well, that is this is good. This at least gives us something to deal with. But we seem to find ourselves rather dependent on the six of you to take out the visionary. Oh, don't worry. Visionaries are our speciality. In which case, which one are you going for first? The dragon absolutely terrifies me, so I think we should take that one out first, and we do have a way to get in for a certain back door. Yes. We should warn you, it is... Terrifying. It is extremely likely that if and when we manage to kill the dragon, it will explode and might kill us in the process. Right, so you're telling us not to put all our eggs in one basket. Well, you see, when we killed it before we had the uh, soul snatching stone, um, when it detonated, I think first it was an enormous wave of cold energy, and then a concussive blast, and then a third one which may or may not transport you to anywhere you can possibly think of. Uh, cold blooding and force. I think it was two physic, two hitting ones. Yeah, yeah. And when you failed it, you got yeeted to a point in, in, in existence. If you failed two of them, you got yeeted somewhere. Mm. Right. For like 500 feet or something stupid. It was a big boom. It's a big boom. Right. <sighs> I mean, oh, and this side, dragon was much bigger. Plus, say it will affect their own side as well. That's true. 
Yes, non discriminatory. Then. Equal opportunities explosion. Hmm? Be the best kind. <laughs> Would it be beneficial then for us to keep the fragment that would contain Geryon separate from the six of you. So you could deal with that. I mean, if something were to happen to you, we weren't completely screwed. Seems reasonable. Hate, hate and part ways with it. Can I just do a little quick mm -hmm. review of intentions with taking that? Make an insight check on. Yeah, that. I was going to say insight check on that from Foundling as well. Okay, that was uh, Ramvi, so make an insight check. Yes. At least I know if it all kicks off, I've got the. I've killed it before, I'll do it again. <laughs> uh, 17. 25. Okay. Um, you can see that this is a mind of a strategist at work. This is, or you can kind of intern that this is a mind of a strategist. She is trying to narrow, you know, trying to eliminate risk. Yeah, there there yeah. wasn't any kind of like hint of greed or anything like that. Or no, it was. She, as far as she's concerned, she has all the glory that she needs. Yeah. It was a. If she, if you you've just told me that you could die killing this thing that is more dangerous than anything else. However, we need to kill that one first because it might take out the dragons that are going to screw over everything. So we are, the tactics behind it are, yes, that one's probably the biggest threat. However, because it's the biggest threat, we need to have yeah. a contingency in place. That's the kind of vibe that you get from it. It's, that sounds like a reasonable plan. Right. Um, if we... I have a spell of translocation um thank you john that was uh, still visible to the <laughs> ah and here was me thinking i was being all subtle no unfortunately um but uh i have a translocation spell so if i take it then i can if you send me a message i can transport it to you or i could teleport myself to you i suppose and then we can or you can deal with the next one as as and when is necessary. Is that agreeable with each of you? Sure. It's probably as good as we're going to get in a situation that will be inherently unpredictable. All right. Journalist takes the uh, fragment from you and just studies it with, with the mind of a, a scholar, who just sort of, hmm, you know, just sort of trying to discern it as much of it as he could. Um, and you say you have a back door to get to the dragon. When we killed the dragon the first time, uh, of course, we looted its hoard um, and inside. Well, he had a small hoard, and inside the small hoard was a small bag. I show the bag. Mm -hmm. This bag leads to his uh, their actual hoard inside the Astral Sea. Now, the last time I opened it, I'm pretty sure when I started handling stuff, it was aware and came back to, of course, protect its hoard and its secrets and its items. Mm. I think we might be able to bait it. That seems like a reasonable strategy. Dragons are territorial and protective of their goods. Yes, if you could do such a thing, then it might be wise. You could suddenly draw it away, draw its attention. <laughs> Hopefully draw it away from the main bulk of the battle. 
So would your plan be to use your gate to get into the city of Maymore, drop the Earth Elementals, then climb into the bag and go to its horde? Seems reasonable. I think this could work. When would you do this? I mean, we can do that whenever Cedric is able. Just need to Big run up first. Yeah, we should probably do at least the night is first. As early as tomorrow morning, we could <laughs> yes. act upon this. I'm being told that we could... Jonas suddenly cocks his head as if he's listening. We can transfer the enchantment from the arrows to the ballistas. Which would be useful. So How long will up. that take? The number of mages I have at my disposal? About four hours. Yeah. For the whole bundle. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> <laughs> it's a minor it's a relatively minor enchantment but it's most of the work has been done it's just translocating it to something bigger we will probably lose about maybe a quarter but still 75 ballistas of dragon slaying and ballistas of dead of fiend slaying seem better than none no definitely Very well. Um, then we shall get to that. Are you going to need anywhere to stay for the evening, or will you go on your own volition, rest where you need to, and then just go? Or In the you... middle of an army seems like a safe place I to rest. Agree. I think it's better for everyone that we stay here. Good in for case, you and good for us. If in case anything changes as well between now and the morning, then we can react to that. All right, we will find you some tents to rest up in. At least two, you know, decency's sake. What, one for us, one for Cedric and his four. <laughs> <laughs> She's still in uh, your bag, so... <laughs> One day I'm going to cash it in just at the right moment. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's going to be like Gandalf arriving at the top yeah, of the hill. 100%. <laughs> it's just going to be like a thousand whores just turn up at the hillside. <laughs> whores and swords. That, that's, our secret, that's our secret extra army. <laughs> Yes, while we attack from the west and the east, there is a third arm. On a third day, <laughs> look towards the <laughs> look towards the north. <laughs> look towards the hill that looks most like a boob. <laughs> <It's... coughs> at, at first light, at first light on the fifth day, look to the tits. <laughs> the beacons on it. Those whores call for <laughs> <everything. laughs> Where were the whores when the west water? <laughs> Quite a few uh, yeah. references today. Absolutely, always. <laughs> oh, 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 boys. Gondhor calls for aid. <laughs> anyway. I mean, the Voyages of Rohan could have quite a different meaning. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, well, was going to say earlier, the reference to the Mines of Moria also have a different meaning. <laughs> yes. Oh. Ah, the, you know they down, went too down deep. Down to <laughs> That's even more concerning if you find a cave troll. <laughs> we we really need to finish. Okay. Yeah. That's what she says. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The cover at this point. Uh, oh, stop. We did some wonderful charity work last month. Now we're back where we belong. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Charity. Right. On that note, then, as you do, do we get to hit the long rest button? No. Ah! Oh, damn it. You retire to your tents. Mostly because you've got a, you know, a full day of things happening, so you have some preparation time in the following morning, if you so wish. 
or the following day, um, and then you have the night of preparation, and then whatever you decide to do. So we will wrap it up there for this week, and we will pick that up in three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Because unfortunately, uh, people are away on the 9th, no, 12th. 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 Well, on the 12th, and we will be coming back from our forest on the 19th. So I don't think any of us will be particularly in the mood to play D&D. We'll have spent too much time with each other. <laughs> um, so we will pick this up on the 26th. But in between then, we will have some board game streams that we will pop up. Um, Laura and I are going to play a game of settlement, and we will probably play uh, Architects of the West Kingdom at some point. Um, might have to try and arrange some things. Uh, if anyone's available Monday, I'm not doing anything. We're not doing anything, I don't think. No, I am. Oh, yes, you are. What are you doing? Oh, yes. So we're doing there. So Monday, we could do a game if people are interested. We can talk about it in chat. Carl looks like he'd be up for a game, maybe. Oh, no, Monday. Have you not got the indeed? He's got a little fart. Connor has a little fart. He loves us. Just discovered the remote. Oh no, now he's crying. Oh no, no, he's oh, happy crying. Happy crying, that's all right. Um, but anyway, right. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us uh, this evening, everyone. Um, take care of Tom has gone all sepia tone. <laughs> um, thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, take care of yourselves, stay safe out there. We will see you next time. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Don't